We are fighting to survive in a crumbling economy, dealing with trauma and the loss of loved ones. Our guests today, Batlore Tusa Hushabana Lidi coping mechanisms, Tse Tusang Tabeng Tsa Anxiety Le Depression, and help us go within. As poet Nahira Wahid wrote, all the women in me are tired. Tonight, we delve into practical ways that will aid us to nourish and recharge ourselves physically, mentally, and spiritually through practicing mindfulness, yoga, and conscious breathing. Beloved, join us as we begin Going Within. The two of us are going to talk about the stressful situations in the world. Guest is a wellness coach and medical doctor, Dr. Ashika Pele. Dr. Ashika, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for inviting me. All right, when I heard about your designation and I thought mindfulness coach or man, mindfulness teacher, could you just tell us a bit about that? These days we're dealing with a lot of stress mm. and people find themselves uh, anxious, mm. depressed. And there's so many other mental illnesses that are coming to the fore. Um, if we find ourselves in a better place mentally and we're able to deal with our stress better, mm. we can actually be much better physically and spiritually as well. Mm. So I believe that um, when we are mindfully present with our lives as it's happening, we're able to be more choiceful about what's about to unfold. This topic for me personally hits home because I, I do suffer from anxiety. I have for a very long time. And there are years which I'm able to deal with it better and then there are years where it's just crippling. Mm. And certain things kind of make it get worse, certain things make it get better. But like for instance, when I was pregnant with my second child, my first trimester was just anxiety ridden and I, I really, really struggled with it. So could you just explain to people the different types of mental health issues that people are dealt with and deal with on a day-to-day -day basis? So most of the time, our minds are actually in what we call an autopilot mode. Mm. It's often um, either moving or being tugged into the past, mm -hmm. into memories, uh, sadness, depression, or it's being pulled or yanked into the future, mm -hmm. into anxiety, planning, uh, uh, lots of to-do lists. And as women, we find ourselves particularly mm. prone to this busyness and always on the move. And what happens with, this, with that is that we're never really in the present moment. Mm. Because when we land in the present moment and when we center ourselves here, we're then able to be more powerful, more choiceful, and more connected to what's happening mm. inside our bodies and outside. And it's from that place of centering in this moment that we can actually take the best action forward. But often we are all over the place. We get lost in our minds. Does this mean we need to lessen wanting to get things done or wanting to hustle or wanting to do better or be better? Or does it mean we just need to find some sort of a balance? It doesn't mean uh, that we have to do less. Mm -hmm. It means doing it from a different place, from a different place of being. It's actually a way of being in relationship with our lives in a different way. So when we practice mindfulness, what we do is we actually um, become more centered and more connected to what's happening inside of us. Mm. If you just take uh, a moment to think about uh, between your episodes, you sit and you're actually centering yourself. You're actually doing it. As you may see. think. Did you see that? Yeah, I saw that. <laughs> You're actually doing it. I think it. it's got to do with your voice. Like, I feel like you were about to prompt me into some sort of an exercise. Because <laughs> I just breathed in there. I don't know why I did yeah, it. Yeah, and, and that's what we need. It's, it, it, the resources are available to us all the time. Mm. So it's as simple as connecting with your breath, mm. connecting with the sensations in your body. But most of our lives are lived from here to here. Mm. And the interesting thing is that thoughts are not facts. Okay. Because thoughts are simply... Uh, mental things that our mind does and our mind is always doing things it's actually a very powerful beautiful organ of our body and mm -hmm. can, can do amazing things and the, really the, the, the power of uh, conscious breathing and mindfulness is around being able to tap into our minds for what it can do the best um, and 
oftentimes we're triggered into an emotional state. Mm. And actually when you're triggered in that emotional state of stress, your, your thinking part of your mind, what we call the executive center, is actually offline. Mm. So you're controlled by the center, what we call the amygdala, which is the emotional center. And oftentimes you'll hear people say, well, I just flipped my lid ab about something when they got angry. And it's, they literally are flipping their lid because what's happening is the, this frontal part is going offline. If you think about a computer or the Wi-Fi, whatever, when, it's, when it goes offline. And the way to come back online is to actually take a breath, practice mindfulness. Because what you do is you switch the nervous systems mm. from that fear-based system, the panic, the threat around the corner, to the more rest, restore, and relax system. And it's that second system that gets activated when you practice mindfulness mm. and breathing. Mm. And it's from that place that we can bring this center back online and actually think more clearly. Would you say anxiety is severe? It's actually a normal thing to be stressed mm. in a way, because if you were in stress, I mean, you and I sitting here in front of the camera, there's a level of adrenaline, there's a level of cortisol in our body, mm. which is actually good because it's getting us to be present, be focused. What happens when we are pushed too much into stress is we get ineffective. Mm. Our body starts to burn out, and this is what we're seeing all over the world, mm. burnout. Uh, when we're unable to deal with what's happening in the present moment, we're now looking for other ways of dealing with it, mm. shutting down our minds and shutting off. Rather That's than the unhealthy part. That's the unhealthy okay. part. Thank you so much, Dr. Hashik. I mean, we really are dying to hear of these uh, coping mechanisms and tools that you can give us to kind of deal with the anxiety and stress. So we'll see you a little later on in the show. It's just about creating that safe space where someone can just kind of breathe out and relax. When we relax, when we feel safe, the body's natural healing ability kicks in. Welcome back to the show. Topic Yarona Yakajenuki going within. Ribuan Totsen Akofela to recause it and stress. But most importantly, Hassel Tweri Sona stress is Udila Lesona Juan. Reduce holistic doctor and author Ila Manga. Dr. Ila, welcome to the show. Oh, thanks for having me. All right, one of the other things that you do on top of being a holistic doctor and obviously an author is that you are a breathwork specialist. Tell us a bit about, about the work you do. So very early on in, in my work as a medical doctor, uh, I saw that physical symptoms are really the tip of the iceberg of what's really going on. And I thought it was important to work with the whole person mm. and get to the root cause of what was causing illness mm. Mm. and really get to understand the emotional and some of the mental underlying factors that could be related to the illness. Mm. So that's been my work, to understand the whole person and to support the whole person. So Dr. Ila, you are a medical doctor. You could have easily just said, I will be the kind of, let's say GP. People come into my office, tell me what's wrong. I check on them, I diagnose, get them to collect medicine over the counter. But you were very passionate about pursuing other methods of healing in terms of holistically, actually. So when did that point come to you? You know, I don't think it was a particular point. I think it happened over time when I realized that the body has its own amazing self-healing ability. Mm. And all we have to do is to create the conditions for that healing to happen. Mm. And sometimes it's just about listening. Wow. It's just about creating that safe space where someone can just kind of breathe out mm. and relax. Mm. When we relax, when we feel safe, the body's natural healing ability kicks in. So when we speak of mental health issues from the likes of anxiety, depression, bipolar disorder, I mean, the list can go on and on. Um, where, what is happening to us as a society for us to be just faced with these, some, these challenges? You know, I think that what we are facing in the world is a lot to do with us being disconnected from ourselves, disconnected with how the body is communicating to us, disconnected from nature, disconnected from each other. And of course, I mean, this is a simplistic way of looking at it, 
but yet I think that it's this disconnection that is causing us to kind of get locked into the mind, to get locked into this state of what I call adrenalized energy. Mm, mm, mm. And when we're in this state, it's difficult for us to then listen to what the body is really saying. It's, we become disconnected from the wisdom of our own body. When you say listen to your body or stop and listen to your body, do you mean physically stop and try figure out what is wrong with it or stop to breathe to be able to just deal with, it, with whatever's stressing you at that point? Well, I think it's both. Mm. You know, when we do consciously stop and breathe, a different part of the brain wakes up. Mm. So we switch from that survival mode into a mode that supports us to think about something differently. It supports a different perspective. Mm. But it also allows us to feel what the body may be communicating to us. And I think that's often what we we forget to do or haven't been taught how to do, mm. uh, taught to do to rather. To do rather. Now let's speak about breathwork specialists, which is one of the things that you do. I've never heard of a breathwork specialist. Could you tell us what that is? Yeah, I, you know, I think that breathing is something that we all take for granted mm. because it's not something we have to think about. It's part of the body's what we call autonomic nervous system function. Mm. So we don't have to think about it. It happens naturally. Mm. 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 And yet, it is one of those functions that we can consciously turn to and breathe in a specific way in order to change the way we feel. Mm. So when we can change the way we breathe, we can change the way we feel, mm. we can change the way we think. Mm. We can influence our body's physiology. Mm. Mm. And this is a fascinating science that we are starting to understand so much more about. Just solely from breathing. So I suffer from anxiety and to anyone else, else out there that gets into a bit of a frenzy when they're dealt with stressful situations, how do you then say to the person, just breathe? Do you know what I mean? Like mm. it can come across as if you're just kind of- Yeah, dismissing yeah, them. Dismissing right. the situation. Yeah, and I think that's also why we've disregarded the power of conscious breathing. Mm. Because when someone says that to us, it can feel dismissive and yet, when we do consciously slow down the way we breathe, there is a tangible shift in the way we feel. Mm -hmm. And so we can shift into a very deep healing state. We can switch on the body's rest and digest mode mm -hmm. when we slow down the breath, when we breathe through the nose, when we breathe from deep within the belly. Mm -hmm. Now the breath is a language, right? So when we're stressed, when we're anxious, what when we're overwhelmed, to the body? like we, when I'm feeling like, <gasps> so your breathing changes, mm, like mm. what you just did, okay? okay? So we tend to breathe very high up in the chest. Oh. We use our neck and shoulder muscles to breathe, and that uses a lot of energy. Now what happens is that we can get stuck into that habit of breathing. Mm. And when we breathe like that, it sends the message to the brain and to the body that we are in a stressed response. Okay. So it becomes a vicious cycle. Okay. Right. Okay. So by changing the way we breathe consciously, we are sending a different message to the brain okay. that we are okay, that we are safe. 50% of us breathe chronically through our mouth. Is that a good thing? Well, not really. Where should no. we be breathing so from? The nose is specifically designed for us to breathe through. Okay. So the architecture of the, of the nose is designed to slow down the air, to humidify it, mm. to purify it, mm. and prepare the air for absorption by the delicate tissues of the lungs. Okay. So when we're breathing through the mouth, we are bypassing that. Okay. And it leads to a host of physical ailments like headaches, insomnia, wow. many of the symptoms that we are experiencing wow. could be attributed to the way that we breathe. And most of us have dysfunctional breathing. And this is why I'm so passionate about the breath. Mm -hmm. It's simple and it's always with us. Mm -hmm. So we don't have to go to a specific place. You know, we can access our breath wherever we are and tap into a sense of stillness and calm. Mm -hmm. And it's an incredibly empowering tool mm -hmm. that helps to, you know, support self-awareness and helps mm -hmm. us to self-regulate and ultimately helps us to heal. All right.
right. Dr. Ila, I'd like you to hold it right there because I have watched a couple of your videos with the techniques and showing people how they can do this from the comfort of their own home, but I do feel like we need to show our viewers. Dr. Ashika, who was the first guest, stressful. Ladies, welcome back. We're talking all things dealing with stress, dealing with anxiety, dealing with mental health issues from a holistic point of view. So let's speak about um, mental health issues. I mean, a lot of the times we're all faced with stressful situations as individuals and we're yearning to cope and we're looking to coping, what are, the, some, what are some of the ways that people and individuals are coping out there? Well, I think that, you know, we, sometimes we think that we are coping, but we're actually maladapting. Mm. Mm. And so we, we do things like we numb, we numb ourselves with, with food or substances. We distract ourselves by overworking mm. or, you know, watching Netflix late into the night. Okay, um, sorry. <laughs> Or, or like we, tend to, we tend to over-exercise and then cause injuries, you know. So sometimes these coping mechanisms are helpful and they're necessary. Mm. But I think like Dr. Ashika was saying, it's about being mindful mm. around what is maybe going on and attending to what we're really feeling and what we're really thinking. And just taking a step back to notice so that we can respond in a different way. And I think, you know, the tools like just being in nature or just taking a walk, um, conscious breathing, um, mindfulness, yoga, or any form of exercise that it just helps the body to decompress, to release. And, you know, just finding little things that bring joy, mm -hmm. I think, are ways that we can cope in a more healthy and sustainable and um, supportive way. What kind of tips would you give us in terms of that? Things like uh, practicing meditation, mm. uh, conscious breathing, being out in nature, uh, walking, and actually exercising with sometimes even without headphones on. A lot of the times you see people exercising out in nature, Pumping but they've music got. Into their ears. Yeah, yeah, so it's really about connecting to other things which allow us to still the mind a little bit more so that there's a deeper awareness that can start to emerge. I'd like us to get through some quick exercises. I mean, we can tell people, we can give them tips till we go blue in the face, but I think if we just equip someone out there with just a small exercise that could help them, I mean, times really are stressful. So I'm going to show you a very simple breathing practice now that really is about slowing down the inhale and slowing down the exhale, that's mm. all. Mm. Breathing slowly for a count of five, and breathing out slowly for a count of five, mm. just through the nose. Can I try it? Yes. Okay. And you can just see what it feels like to turn your palms upwards. And for now, just notice that you are breathing. Notice the sensations of the breath in the nostrils. Beautiful. And now inhale from your center for a count of five. Inhale, two, three, four, Five. Exhale. Two, three, four, five. Beautiful. Inhale. Two, three, four, five. Exhale. Two, three, four, five. Keep going. As you're breathing in, feel like you are filling your whole body with the breath. Beautiful. And as you're exhaling, you're releasing tension relaxing the back of the neck and the shoulders, you're calming down, beautiful. And a long inhale, long and slow and deep. As you exhale, soften, relax and let go. Wow, okay, I literally felt like I was at a spa or something. Well, it is like an internal massage oh and goodness, that, that was less than five minutes. Yes, and that was great. So you'd, give, you'd tell that to someone who's going through what exactly? to assist them with well, stress or coping? going through life. Mm. I think that life is a stressful situation mm. and I think mm. that stress is a normal part of our everyday life. Mm. 
And I think the idea is just to kind of integrate these recovery loops mm -hmm. before the stress accumulates to become a trauma. Mm -hmm. okay. mm -hmm. So it's allowing the breath to kind of catch the stress response and move it through the system to bring us to a state of balance uh, you know, before it kind of accumulates and then leads to chronic illness eventually. Mm -hmm. So basically managing it in those moments. Exactly. I see. And Dr. Ashika, would you have a, um, an exercise that you want to share with us, something quick that could help, help out with coping mechanisms during stressful times? I think... I'm feeling sleepy. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe just to give a few tips that you could use in the day. So uh, without going into a practice itself, uh, there are many ways of getting yourself to pause and reset in the day. Something like this, a conscious breathing exercise. Um, something as, as simple as pausing with your food. Uh, mindful with your, with your food before okay. you eat. Often we're eating in a very unconscious way. We get our food and before you know it, it's, it's gone. Yeah, yeah. So actually pausing, looking at your food, taking a bite, feeling, the, smelling it, feeling how it feels in your mouth, mm -hmm. even just one mindful bite of whatever it is that you're eating can actually start to change your nervous system as well. So there are many little mindful pauses. You could put a, a reminder on your phone uh, that's to say breathe. And often we wear these smartphones that say breathe now. Mm -hmm. uh, so there are many little things that you can do to just Give yourself little pauses and each one of us needs to tailor that to our own lives and our own days. Mm -hmm. you, could, you could start with meditation even five minutes in the morning or five minutes in the evening and see how you go from there. So there are really many little tips, reading and there's so many resources on the internet as well. But ladies, thank you so much. I know there are a lot of people out there who are sitting and going, my goodness, I didn't even realize that I was just chasing, chasing, going, going and not taking a step or a second rather to just breathe and take in everything. So thank you so much for being here first and foremost and secondly for this advice that we'll take forward. Topic Yarona Yakajeno is going within. Habu pelo buba busy, difficult. Remember to come back to yourself. Uko heme, upoze. Hi, my name is Oshab Ubatla Oshaba. Hashtag Yarona ho social media in case you missed out on some important pointers. Ugaya ho motswako 20. Nalwena, ruta kopana next week. Have a good evening. Beloved, in the words of Rob Bell, walk, don't run. That's it. Walk, don't run. Slow down, breathe deeply, and open your eyes because there's a whole world right here within this one. Wednesdays who the Monati Breakfast Show on Lisedi FM or it's Hare Hape Ho Jabulu Jule on Ukozi FM Gadi Thursdays.